start talking about in, uh, exponential functions. We've done exponential modeling. Let's look at the inverse of exponentials because we need this to solve some equations in certain cases. So first of all, let's look at a definition. Um, here is your general form for logarithm. Okay, we abbreviate L O G. This little B right here is usually a subscript. Not usually, it is a subscript. Okay, this is a constant. Um, it's always positive. Okay, it's always positive. We never really talk about that being a negative. It's usually always a positive number. X is usually a variable. You can have a number there, and we'll look at that both ways. So we read that log base B of X. If you want to write that beside it, you read that log base B of X. And so we'll talk about what that really means right here. Okay, so if your function, if your original function is defined as base b raised to the x, that's the exponential form, then it's inverse and it's written as log base b of x, so that's the top of the, of the inverse of it. Okay, so um, we've also got this relationship right here, y is equal to log base b of x, if and only if b to the y is equal to x. So if you're trying to evaluate... A okay, so if you're trying to evaluate a logarithm, there is a logarithm button on your calculator, and we'll look at that here in a little bit. But right now, we should talk about what that means. Okay? Log base b of x means b, that is x, to some power y is equal to the number inside the logarithm. So I call it the swoop, because one of the first things we're going to look at is converting between logarithmic and exponential form. So I call it the swoop method. You start at the base. And you swoop around the equal sign. Okay, so you've got the base, b is the base, y is your exponent, x is what it's equal to. Okay, that's to go between logarithmic and exponential form. Okay, so base, y is your exponent, x is what it's equal to. That's how I remember it. Okay? Sometimes the logarithm will be written without a base. For example, log of x is equal to 100, that means it's understood to be base 10, and we'll call that the common logarithm. Okay, so if there's no base on the log, then that means it's base 10. So this answer, x right here, would be, uh, well, no, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Um, that would be 10 to the 100. It would be x. I was thinking the 100 was in a different spot. Never mind. Um, no, we also have something called the natural log. Okay, we also have the natural logarithm. It only has a base of e. Okay, ln does not have another base. Its base is always e. The natural logarithm is the inverse of e to the x, um, and so it never has a base written with it because it is always understood to be e. It never has a different base. Okay. That's always an E right there. Um, natural log only goes with E. Common log is base 10. Any other log isn't at any other base. Uh, now, people are warned a lot of times when I write the natural log, I write it in cursive. I write a cursive LN just because if you don't, it actually looks like a 1. And I don't want you to get confused. So that's usually how I write the natural log. Um, with a cursive L and an N so that I know the difference between LN and 1NF. Okay? Not that that really even makes any sense, but just in case. Okay? And you may wonder, well, if it's the natural logarithm, why is it LN? Why is it in L? It has to do with the Latin word for the person that came up with it. Okay? Um, so, a little fun fact there. Alright, so first of all, let's look at a relationship here. We've got 10 to the x and log of x. Okay, I just told you that those were inverses of each other. 10 to the x and log of x are inverses. So let's fill in this little table right here and we're going to graph it and we're going to look at a relationship here uh, between the graphs of these two functions. Okay, so 10 to the negative first. Uh, remember properties of exponents says that's 1 over 10. 1 tenth is equal to 0.1. 10 to the 
anything to the zero. Anything to the zero is positive one. Ten to the first is ten. Ten to the first is ten. Ten squared is of course one hundred. That's not going to fit on our little graph here, but we're still going to write it down. Um, and ten to the tenth, well, that's ten with nine zeros after it. So um, we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, log. Okay, the log of negative 1. Let's use a calculator here for a second and see what it gives us. Okay, the log button is right beside 7. Okay, the log button is right beside 7. Um, type in negative 1 there. And it gives you an error message. The error message says non-real answer. Let's think about this for a second. We just talked about what the logarithm meant. Okay, the log of some number means that the base raised to some power equals that number. So that says the base 10 raised to some power equals negative 1. Can we raise positive 10 to a power and get negative 1? There's no way you're going to get a negative number. Nevertheless, negative 1. So that's why um, you cannot take the log of a negative number. We're just going to say that it's undefined. Okay, You cannot take the log of a negative number. Uh, apparently, if your calculator is in imaginary mode, it will give you a number with I on the end, which is an imaginary yeah. number. <laughs> um, well, there are some higher levels of math that use them because just the real numbers, there aren't enough of them to describe the world that we live in. It's stuff that's like way over my head, too. But there's actually a purpose. I just can't explain it. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes, yes. There are math people out there that are way smarter than I am. Yes. Pretty much. But I mean, there's actual real application of it. I just can't really explain that application of it. I do know that imaginary numbers are used in electri in, in like electricity and, and stuff like that. Like electrical engineers have to work with imaginary numbers. So, anyways. I had an entire semester's class uh, called Complex Analysis that was all about imaginary numbers. So, anyways. Fun time. Okay. Uh, let's get back to the logs here. Okay, so the log of 0, that says 10 to some power is equal to 0. Can we do that? No, that's not going to work either. So you cannot plug 0 or anything less than 0 into a logarithm. It's not going to work. Okay, it's not going to work. Okay, let's think about this. Log of 1. 10 to what power is equal to 1? To 0. So the log of 1 is equal to 0. Uh, let's see here. The log of 2... That's 10 to some power is equal to 2. Well, I certainly do not know that right off the top of my head. Um, I do know that it's less than 1. But use the calculator. It tells me it's 0.3. And the log of 10, 10 to what power is 10? Well, that would be 1. Okay, so let's, uh, let's graph this, what we can of it. Um, I'm going to do 10 to the x in green. So negative 1 is 0 0.1, 0.1. 1, 10, that's all I can fit on there, but I know what my exponential is supposed to look like, right? We know what those are supposed to look like after the last two days, okay? And it's hanging out right there on the x-axis, so it doesn't actually cross it or touch it like mine does, but my 10 is very thick, so. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the log function in purple. So let's see here. 1, 0 is the first point that I have, 2.3, and 10, 1. Okay, so I'm going to connect those. And just because the first number that I got an answer for is 1 does not mean that it's actually the first point. Okay, I could have plugged in decimal numbers as well, and that's supposed to be a straight line. Okay, it's not supposed to be all wavy like that, but y'all know the drill. Okay, um, they don't just appear out of nowhere. Um, just like the exponentials approach the x-axis right here, 
Um, on this graph here is to show you the symmetry between 10 to the x and the log of x. If you turn your head so that the line y equals x is straight in front of you, uh, you can see that 10 to the x and log of x are mirror images of each other. That is one property of being inverses. Okay? That's one property of being inverses. <clears throat> so, Pretty much what I'm trying to say is if you know what the exponential function looks like, you can graph the logarithmic function um, that has the same base just by reflecting it over that line. Okay? Alright, so speaking of, let's look at a couple of different examples. You've got these pictures there on your paper. In general, that first one there in the top left corner is um, your exponential is b to the x, so the logarithm is log base b of x. That's just kind of, in general, that's the relationship that you're taking that. You also have the graph of e to the x and then that's the log of x. Those are inverses of each other. We just did the 10 to the x and the log of x. Um, and here, the last one right here is a comparison of the natural log of x versus the common log of x. They have the same shape. So that log of x is, has higher values until you get the 1, and then after 1, the natural log of x has higher y values than the common log of x, and that has to do with that base e versus base 10. That's why that relationship exists. So same general shape, just slightly different uh, y values, except for at 1. Okay? Any logarithm with any base going to cross the x-axis at positive 1. If it's just log of x, natural log of x, log base, whatever of x, if that's all the function is, it's going to cross at 1 because any number to a zero power is 1. Now, if you start adding and subtracting stuff in there, it's going to start moving it around, but if it's just log of x, it's going to cross at 1. So here's some properties of the logarithmic function. <coughs> Anything less than zero. So your domain is from zero to infinity. Or your x values are greater than zero if you prefer the inequality form. Okay? Interval notation, inequality notation. Either one, they say the same thing. The range is all real numbers. <coughs> the range is all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, Logarithmic functions don't grow very fast. Okay, you'll kind of see that these they're not increasing very much. Once you cross one, they stop increasing so quickly, but they do still continue on for forever. If your numbers get big enough, you can get bigger values for the y values. Notice that if you remember exponential functions, this relationship also applies for exponential functions. The domain of an exponential is all real numbers. The range is y is greater than Logarithmic functions are always increasing, unless, again, you mess with something if you put a negative in front of it or something like that. But they're usually always increasing for their entire domain. We don't have any horizontal asymptotes, but we do have vertical asymptotes. Okay? You can't draw x equals 0. So there's a vertical asymptote for logarithmic functions, where exponential functions have that horizontal asymptote. And then we talked a little bit about the end behavior of our exponential for logarithmic functions. This is using limit notation, which you'll see uh, when we get to say calculus. Okay, as the x values approach positive infinity, so as the x values are going to the right, the y values are increasing to infinity. As your x values are approaching zero, so as you're getting closer and closer to the y-axis, our y values are decreasing. So that's the end behavior of this current, of any of these logarithmic functions. Acts. 